My name is Risa Higgins. I am the founding director of a nonprofit called 1128 Ministries. It is our great pleasure to be able to bring these resources to you. We have had help in bringing these to you, and I want you to know that the Rowlett City Council, as well as parents of Garland ISD, have come together to create these resources to support you. Your work matters. I see how hard you have been working, how difficult education is right now. And so it is my hope that in these two resources you find here, you will be able to continue to get support in this difficult season. So let me tell you about them very briefly. One resource was created by a therapist in the local area. Her desire was to create an opportunity for you to explore some of what has been lost in this time. It is important for us to say, while Jennifer is a licensed counselor, if you need professional help yourself, please reach out to a therapist. This is simply a tool. It is not intended to be used as a therapy session. The second resource you'll find is a guidance, if you will, to a moment of quiet, of meditation. It is my hope that this is a practice that serves you in the everyday running around difficult work that you do. With both of these resources, it is the desire of 1128, these parents who see you and care for you, as well as the Rowlett City Council. It is our desire to say, thank you. My name is Jennifer Springman. I'm a licensed professional counselor. My husband and I have a 15-year-old son that is a freshman in the Garland School District. We have been so grateful to our teachers over the past two years. I think it's important to address our teachers about the losses they've experienced, both personally and professionally, in this crisis. We attempt to understand loss in a timeline of before and after. I'd like us to spend some time talking about the past two years of the COVID pandemic. The before and after for you as an educator a family member. What fulfilled you most as a teacher? How have you been most changed? How has your family been changed? What has been your biggest fear? Your saddest moment? Tell me what you've learned most about yourself, your strength during this time. You've had a lot of time and concern, thinking about your students, your family, and others. There's been a lot of anxiety for you in these past two years, hard decisions to make, lots of reflection. Self-care is the most important thing we can talk about right now, especially for teachers. I'd like us to complete a short exercise. If you're comfortable, close your eyes and imagine a quiet space where you are alone, peaceful. How are you restoring yourself? Be in this moment, this time, Reflect upon your senses, 
your breathing. What are you feeling? What hope do you have for yourself in this peaceful moment? We are going to practice together a meditative stance that gives you an opportunity to stop and reset at any moment you find yourself feeling overwhelmed. As we practice here together, we'll spend about 15 minutes, but as you get more comfortable with this practice, you can practice it anytime, anywhere, in as little as one to two minutes. Let's begin. First, put both of your feet on the floor Feel the weight of your body being supported. If you can, lean back into your heels a little bit, noticing how the floor supports you. Take a deep breath. You might even consider placing your hand on your belly and feeling it expand as you inhale and deflate as you exhale. Take another deep breath. Notice, how is your body in this moment? Is your posture defensive? Resigned? Just notice, how is your body in this moment? Take another deep breath. As best you can, name the emotion that you are experiencing right now. If it helps, we can narrow it down to the main categories. Mad, sad, glad, afraid. Guilty, shame. When you've landed on a word, either one that I offered or one that you knew for yourself, pay attention to where that feeling is in your body. Do you feel the anger as a rapid heartbeat? Or maybe you feel sadness as a lump in your throat. Notice, where does this feeling live in your body? And focus your attention in on the physical sensation. When you've named the feeling and where it lives in your body, to the best of your ability, turn your mental energy toward the following words. Welcome anger or fear or sadness. Welcome. As you focus in on the physical sensation in your body, Repeat the words welcoming this feeling. Stay here as long as you need to until the physical feeling begins to change. So for instance, 
if your heart rate begins to slow, if the lump in your throat gets smaller. The majority of our feelings only last for a minute or two. If we will allow them to be what they are, we become more centered in the moment. Take another deep breath. Now is the time to reflect on what this feeling wanted to teach you, what it wanted to offer you. If it helps, grab a journal or your phone just make a quick note. Note the feeling, where it was in your body, and what it might have been inviting you to pay attention to. Anytime. You find yourself in a space where you are emotionally overwhelmed. You can practice just as we did here. Feel your feet on the floor. Take at least two deep breaths. Name the feeling and where it lives in your body. Welcome the feeling until the physical sensation changes. And then if you're able, notice and maybe even record what the feeling was inviting you to pay attention to. It's my hope that this is a practice that's helpful for you in moments that you feel overwhelmed or in moments that you find yourself unable to keep moving forward. We've all taken in so much in these last two years. Your body and the physical sensation of your feelings has things to teach you. I hope you take the opportunity to learn.